Hey, it's Andrew Huang. So I was thinking about trills the other day and I ended up doing this experiment that I really loved and it turned into kind of a cool way to come up with interesting chords. Let me show you what I did. So I played three different trills at completely random spots on the neck. Uh, I was just kind of trying to do some low ones, some high ones, and uh, they were spaced differently. I had a one semitone, a two semitone, and a three semitone trill, though uh, you could probably experiment with different combinations. So I've got them all stacked up in Ableton now, and let's just have a listen. <laughs> Not sounding great yet. So uh, a couple things that I'm gonna do before we even get into adjusting the notes here. Let's put an OTT on each track. Just to keep the volume more consistent throughout the whole trill, I'm also going to just cut it off because towards the end you get some string noise and then uh, we'll throw some echo on. Okay, so got it sounding kind of pretty now other than the actual notes. And now I'm just gonna pitch shift the individual clips around, just using my ears and, and seeing if something feels good, not knowing what these notes are still. I might start by taking one out at a time, listening to different combinations of just two of these trills at a time, seeing which are the most complimentary to begin with, and then pitch shifting the other one around that. Seems to be a semitone clash there, maybe. All right, so let's start there and then just adjust this third one. I'm actually gonna even shorten these more, fade out the end so they're just like little, little stabs, little puffs. All right, there's one kind of nice chord. Now I'm gonna copy and paste that and then shift these all again completely at random. Some will go up, some will go down. Let's listen to what this is like now. All right, again, find the most offensive one. And let's listen while pitch shifting this last one. What if we reverse these to make them smoother? All right, now I'm gonna set up a new track and record all that as one audio clip. Cool, muting the originals, and now let's just take that like reverbed out part of this. OTT that again? There, now we got a couple nice chord stabs with a lot of flavor to them. Get a bit of a beat going. I'll reverse this one again at the end actually. So I'm having a lot of fun with this technique and I think it's different than just picking notes at random because with the trills, each audio clip has two different notes. And so when you pitch shift them, you're moving them both at the same time. And I think even if you have a pretty well-trained ear, it takes twice as much calculating to predict where those notes are gonna land. So it kind of forces you to just use your ears and uh, listen, decide what you like, and not rely on your usual habits of where you would normally put notes to make a chord that you like. Not to sound too much like a cooking show, but here's one I made earlier with uh, pretty different results. Also with the trills, I think that flutteriness between the notes is really nice and it's different than just playing them at the same time. Even though with the reverb and delay, you do end up hearing all the notes ringing out together, there's an underlying movement with the trills that I just think is sonically pleasing. So after doing this experiment, it got me thinking about that aspect of trills, how it's two notes going back and forth over and over again really quickly, but somehow that's a completely different effect than just playing both notes at the same time. And I think what's happening is that the trill is spreading out the dissonance. If you play a one semitone trill, totally palatable. If you just hold those same two notes together, everybody wants you to stop. 
So my theory is that in these weird chord examples we've been looking at, we're fluctuating in and out of slightly more complex dissonances, where even though you have the reverb causing all the notes to ring out at once, uh, some of them are much weaker than whichever notes are actually playing in any given split second. So after all that, where my brain went to was what happens if we play a trill faster than humanly possible? And what happens if it's so fast that our ears and brains can't actually hear when it changes from one note to the other? So I tried it out on the synth, I'm gonna show you, but first we should talk about the giveaway. The giveaway! Firstly, this beautiful guitar I was using. This is a Fender American Ultra Jazz Master. A beautiful guitar, retails for around two grand. Fender recently gave this to me. Uh, thank you, Fender, it's amazing, it's beautiful, and uh, they also wanna give one to you. They're also contributing two of their new Mustang GTX 100 amps. Uh, Novation's new launch pad is in the giveaway. We've got a few modules from IntelliGel in the giveaway. Uh, some MIDI controllers from Arteria. So much more, uh, check it out out, the link is in the description. It's open to anybody worldwide and I'll announce the winners on my Instagram the week of May 15th. So our experiment here is pretty simple. It's just two oscillators and they're both analog so I can crank them as fast as I want without worrying about any kind of buffering or latency or glitching or crashing. We're just dealing with pure electricity so I guess the upper limit on our speed would be the speed of light. So I'm using the square wave from an ACL variable sync VCO that's gonna oscillate between two distinct pitches. I'm attenuating that through a 4MS VCA matrix and then using that signal to control the pitch of a Moog Mother 32. You can ignore all of these other cables. That is for a different patch. Actually, do you wanna listen to it for a sec? Okay, back to our experiment. Really important stuff we're doing here. So all that tech talk from before was basically just a fancy way of saying we're making a trill. Now we're gonna use this knob to change the rate of the trill and we're probably also gonna use this switch that goes between low, medium, and high speeds. Did you notice what happened there? Two things. First, we're just hearing one tone now, where there used to be two. Secondly, that note is exactly in between the original two notes. I'm gonna use the switch to flip back and forth between the uh, new note and the original trill. We've got na 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 as our trill, and then we end up with na. The semitone in between that whole tone of our trill. So when I first stumbled upon this, my thought was like, okay, maybe when you play a trill super fast, the note you end up with is just the exact in-between point of your original two notes. Would that be too simple of an explanation? Turns out, yes. I repeated this with a few different intervals and, uh, well, just listen, this is an octave. <laughs> A lot of different notes. We're basically just getting into wave shaping synthesis. So um, two notes really fast turn into one note, some other note. Maybe if you have more ideas about this, leave a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Also, let me know if you try out that chord technique, enter the giveaway. This video is just all over the place, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Don't, why would you do that?